Welcome to the JB's PowerCast, where we talk about industry news, events, performance parts, trucks and accessories, shop talk, and we'll even do a little bench racing. The JB's PowerCast starts now. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in this week. Corey, mm -hmm. how was your week? It was pretty good. Yeah? Kind of quiet. Actually went by kind of fast, and kids are gone to school, you know, half of them anyway. It's amazing. Um, actually, my... One day, my one son stayed home. Right. He woke up, had a bit of a sniffle. Sure. Allergies, not allergies. You phone him. I keep him home for the day. No problem. Of course. Of it's amazing course, yeah. the difference one extra kid makes. We've got the two little ones at home. And the day before, it was like... Right. Ah. Yeah. The next day, you know, the old one, he's just like, chat, 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 sure. chat. I'm like, aren't you feeling better? Go, go yeah. away. <laughs> but no, it's fine. Yeah, it's good. And you guys are back at school as well. Absolutely. You know, and, and same thing. You know, my uh, younger daughter sniffles a bit and it's like, well, according to the 45 page letter that we got and mm -hmm. we go through, you know, the scenarios. Yeah, you shouldn't go to school all year, but hey, we'll keep you for the day and we'll let you go tomorrow. Exactly. So, yeah. I mean. It is what it is, and we follow the rules. and uh, We just kind of make the best of uh, the circumstance, which yeah. so far seems fine. I, I agree. I mm -hmm. agree. I, yeah. I, I, I do thank God that I'm not a teacher mm -hmm. because, I, I, you know, their jobs are tough, especially now more than ever. Stressful. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, want their kids to stay safe. They want them to learn. But then maybe the kid has to have two weeks off, and he's got to do homeschooling anyways. Of right? course. Like, it's just going to be... but. We're back at school. That's the most important thing, and yes. hopefully they get a full year out of it. Yep, and I think as long as, you know, everyone is stays safe and plays by the rules, and for the most part, you know, they they make a lot of sense, and I think it'll, I think it'll oh, be yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. Well. Weather's been good here. Seen a lot of nice cars out this last week. It's mm -hmm. been fantastic. Mm -hmm. You've mm -hmm. been riding the bike at all? I rode it today. Nice. Yep, good. getting those last September rides in. They're, they're to me, they're some, on of the the bike, some of the best ones. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you know, like, the air's a little brisk. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to eat that many mosquitoes. That right. If, I was if thinking any. that, yeah, this morning on the way, and, you know, it, it's not cool enough to be cold yet. It's just good enough that it's like, ah, it feels nice. Yeah. You know, and you stop, and when you're waiting at a light, you're not, like, sweating under sure. your gear. Sure, yeah. sure, yeah. Oh, no, that's good. But, I mean, we got to get them in when we can here, you know, before we know it, it'll be minus 20, and we'll be talking <laughs> remote starters and uh, how to keep your vehicle warm. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's some here that can't wait to go sledding. We, we try That's to keep true. those guys yeah. in the corner, and we don't want them to yeah. say much. But uh, yeah, you can't I mean. keep them quiet forever. No, I know. Um, well, let's talk about some news. Sure. So there's not a ton of super high performance stuff in the last week that happened, but there is some cool stuff that I want to talk about. Obviously, everything is not all about horsepower. We're car guys. We appreciate Absolutely. the aesthetics. We like the nice stuff. So this came out the other week. Um, I didn't touch on it last week. It had just come out, but I sort of skipped over it because we had some other stuff to talk about. Um, so Jeep um, unveiled, they're calling it a concept or a prototype, but they've also said that the finished one's going to be very, 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 very close to this. Okay. So obviously everyone remembers, for the most part, pretty fondly, the Jeep Grand Wagoneer. Yes. That was their big SUV type thing, kind of even before SUVs were an SUV type thing. Sure. Like it was more like an off-road, it was more like a large off-road Jeep that just sat a lot of people. Before before SUV was like a real sort of um, sure. niche kind of market. Yeah. So that's been a huge gap for Jeep for, geez, I don't know, Day decades, yeah, right? It's absolutely. been forever. So they've announced, um, and, you know, there was some drips of stuff that everyone kind of knew this was coming a little bit. But there's going to be a 2021 Jeep Grand Wagoneer. Um, this is going to be a large, classy, luxury SUV, which is obviously a bit of a departure from Jeep. But um, I don't know. I I kind of love it. I think it looks really good. I agree. Yeah, I it, agree. like it looks. Um, you know, they're going to be going up against um, guys like obviously the Tahoe, the Expedition, but they're also targeting like the Escalade, BMW X7, the um, Navigator, and I mean, purely based on aesthetics, they totally stand a chance. The thing oh, looks sharp as heck. No question. Um, do you, I mean, when I think Wagoneer, do you not think of like wood panel siding? 100%. You know, yeah. you know what I think of is the Simpsons episode where they, um, uh, what is the, they had like a, there's an ad for an SUV that was oh, making yeah, fun yeah, of, yeah, yeah. what did they call that? Uh, um, the, uh, shoot, I should have looked that up ahead of time. But I know um, exactly what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, and like that was basically like a Bronco Wagoneer. It was sort of a, right. a fake amalgamation. That's what I think of right. um, with the Wagoneer. Yeah, wood paneling, big, blocky, chunky, um, uh, not terribly practical other no. than just having a lot of space. Right. Uh, and for me, I 
The Simpsons for sure, but I also think of like John Candy, Great Outdoors. Right, totally. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. That's the you know the family of four going out into the wilderness in your Jeep. Yeah, right. Canyon Arrow was that what it's called Canyon Arrow, yeah, something yeah, like that. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so you know this is going to be a premium vehicle. It, sure, it's going to look the part. It's going to act the part. Um, and it's going to cost the part, no doubt. It's going to be yeah. it's going to be probably pretty pricey. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they haven't said specifically how much it's going to cost, but Jeep president said so. There's going to be a Grand Wagoneer and there's going to be a Wagoneer, which is going to okay. be the smaller sure. sort of version. Um, the Wagoneer is going to start around sixty thousand, but like a fully loaded Grand Wagoneer is going to be over a hundred k. Which all right, that's fine. That's what it needs to be sure. to compete with those. You know, like an X7, that's like one hundred and fifty. Exactly. Um, an Escalade, those are what ninety, ninety well, for plus sure. all for of like it. a yep. fully loaded one. Absolutely. So you know, probably the average one, like a good, comfortable. You know, it's probably going to be seventy yeah. or yeah, so, yeah. which is not an absorbent amount of money for a for a, a fancy seven seat SUV. And 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 it's funny. Uh, yesterday at dinner, my wife and I were talking. A friends of ours just bought a Toyota Sequoia, a twenty twenty. Yep. And I'm like, oh, I think those are like fifty or sixty thousand. And I was like, I think she said she spent eighty. Oh yeah. So I look it up. I'm like, wow. So not out of the realm. Not at all. Well, that's like the the, the Pacifica, the Chrysler right. Pacifica. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, a new one of those. They're like seventy, eighty, ninety. They're right. A lot of money. Yeah. And like, yeah, it's a minivan, but they're also pretty damn nice. <laughs> they're loaded with like an insane amount of features. Like well, they're actually really nice vehicles. Of course, I hate to admit it, but huh? preaching to the choir on that, <laughs> you know. And it, it is a sign of age when you start saying, "No, oh, that minivan's pretty." Yeah. How damn many kids nice. do you have again? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> we both know the answer to that. Yeah. Exactly. So the Ram, uh, sorry, the the Grand Wagoneer is actually based off of the full size Ram fifteen hundred. That's the platform that they're using. Um, so we expect that engine transmission options are going to mirror that probably. Sure. Um, they're going to be using their hybrid system, the e-torque, but there's probably going to be a 3.6 V6. Uh, there's probably going to be a 5.7 Hemi. Um, there might be the three liter diesel, which would be kind of neat as well. A yeah. diesel, uh, three yeah. liter diesel SUV would be pretty yeah, cool. Absolutely. Will there be an SRT Grand Wagoneer? Yeah, probably. Yeah, eventually. guaranteed. Yeah. Absolutely. It's it'll, friggin' it'll be, yeah. it's Dodge. They'll yeah. Give it a minute and they'll yeah. put it in. <laughs> It's already in the works. But. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so obviously, you know, that's not going to be available ever yet, but, you know, uh, eventually. Now, they have said also it's going to have unmatched towing capability for its class. So because it's built on a half-ton platform, right. yeah. it's probably going to be pretty capable as well. It'll for sure. probably be able to do most of the things that a truck can do. Um, they said there's actually going to be three different all-wheel drive systems, full air suspension. So it sounds like there's quite a bit of tech in it. Yeah. It's not just a take the body off a RAM and put an SUV body on it, Sure. kind of like the old days. Yep. Um, it is you know, pretty re-engineered. So um, the interior, again, the pictures that they have is of the you know, quote-unquote concept, but oh my goodness, it looks so good. Like, yeah. you know, Jeep has not ever been known for their interiors. Simplicity. Traditionally. Fix it in the trail. Right. Yeah. Even the current gen, um, you know, even the brand new one has like a nicer interior, but like this thing looks so good. Plush, the materials look nice. It's got, you know, wood and glass and the detailing and the letters. It's got little plaques everywhere, like established 1968, yeah. stuff like that. It looks very well thought of. Um, the, the sort of center two-spoke steering wheel is definitely a throwback to the old one. You bet. Um, so we'll just talk about screens for a minute because that last picture showed there was a bunch of screens. So um, it's a little absurd, but this is, hey, it's 2021 when this is coming out. So it has a 12.1 inch um, gauge cluster. So the gauge itself is a screen, yep. right? Uh, there's another 12.1 inch center touch screen in yep. the middle. Standard that's stuff like in the middle. Standard yep. stuff. That's yep. above a 10 inch touch screen that's for the HVAC. So the HVAC is a touch screen. Above On its own, that up, yep, right. gotcha. is another 12 inch. For multimedia, okay. Um, so then the passenger side has another 10 inch touch screen, um, which controls, I don't know, other things, I guess. Um, <laughs> And then, hold on, I'm not, I'm not done yet. Um, then there is a, another 10-inch touchscreen on the second row center console. So the oh. first passengers back get a center. And then there's a pair of 10-inch touchscreens for each of the passenger in that row as well, like in the, in the seats. Unbelievable. So that's a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screens maybe. Um, which is crazy, but it looks really good. It it actually looks unreal. And when I when 
when you set up, you know, for our show today, I obviously clicked on it to have a look, yeah. and I seen that. I'm like, so as a passenger, you basically got a tablet in front of you, totally, to do whatever the heck you want to do on your own side, mm -hmm. and then behind the kids, let me do whatever I want as well. Yeah, in so their stuff, they're really separating the vehicle into quadrants or whatever you want to call it, so that hey, you want, I mean, dual climate control was the coolest freaking greatest thing in the world when it's like you want it hot you want it cold wow we're 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 moving forward jets and family yeah but now it's like wait a minute set your seat set your music set your temperature set anything you want and you do whatever the heck you yeah, want you to. want to watch a movie you want to play a game exactly. you want to listen to a podcast yeah sure no problem i mean when you look at it it looks oh my god that's futuristic but it's actually now mm -hmm. right? oh, we're, yeah. we're yeah. here we're now yeah and yeah, I, I think it looks unbelievable, you know, and, and, and now, like you said, although that is a concept picture, it's probably going to look pretty damn close to that. I guarantee you, it's not going to yeah. look that far off. Yeah. And, you know, is it going to have all of those screens? Is it going to look exactly the same? I don't know. But again, I mean, you know, boss man, you know, sure. of Jeep says, yeah, it's a concept, but, you know, don't worry. This is basically, it. this is basically what it's going to be. Yeah. yeah. Um, so cool. It has a 23... Again, this is obviously the top-loaded. Yeah, of course. You know, we're no point we in talking talk, about anything yeah, other nope. than that. Always talk about the best. It has a 23-speaker sound system that's made by a company called Macintosh, okay. which a lot of people don't really know from no. the car end. It's like super duper high end home audiophile okay. elect, uh, speaker systems and sure. amplifiers. Um, and I wasn't really familiar. I went and like browsed their website and it's like insane high end stuff. Um, Jeep very proudly boasts that it's the only vehicle in the world that's ever been powered by a Macintosh full stereo system. Wow. So um, it's, you know, again, and we're going against those guys like BMW and Audi and they put a lot of engineering into their factory sound. Of course they do. Um, so, you know, Jeep, they are trying to step it up. They're trying to step it up. So Real it, cool. it looks super cool. Um, it'll be pretty expensive, but not insane. And it's got a ton, a ton, a ton of tech. That is just where it's everything's going kind of going. Yeah. So I, I look forward to seeing one. I, yeah, I think they look really sharp. Uh, I, I agree with you. And, and the tech is the future of the car. That's the having the ability to have the screens for the kids in the back and doing your own thing. Who's, I mean, we have 3G in the cars already. So yeah. Who's to say, you know, you're driving, I'm driving and our wives are going through the shopping list or doing the pre-order on this or doing sure. what right on the thing in front of them. It's, it's there, it's now, it's well, not there's only, no Not only that is that, you know, well, like you were saying, you separate it out. Obviously, it's going to have Apple CarPlay. It's going to have Android Auto. So each one of those screens is probably just going to be a mirror from your phone. For sure. So you're sitting there and, you know, oh, you want to watch a video on your phone. You want to pull up YouTube or you want to go browse, whatever. And it's just right in front of you. And everyone's kind of doing their own thing. Yep. Um, yeah, it's... It is pretty amazing, it is. but it's also like it's not so far fetched that it's like, oh wow, future. It's like, no, 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 no. This is this is tech we have today. Yeah, you can go buy this today. Yeah, it's just here right now in yeah. front of you. Yeah, and again, the, the expensive for the for the top class one. Yeah, but like we've been talking, that hundred thousand dollar price tag is kind of the norm when you're in the top end of any vehicle. Yeah, and I mean, you know, give it five years and it'll be a hun it'll be in a Hyundai for half the price. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how All that goes. Genesis. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's just how that goes. Yeah, of course. Um, so, uh, actually, this is cool. Uh, I like this a lot. There is, we haven't done any spy shot stuff for a while, only because it's just, it's, you know, it's not terribly interesting to look at. Um, there was a truck that was driving around that got spied, and it looks like some kind of crossover thing, but somebody was very eagle-eyed, and they noticed something about it. The shape of it... You wouldn't normally say that looks like a truck. It looks like some kind of weird boxy crossover thing. Obviously, you can see where the truck lines are. Yes. But it's really small. Very yeah. small. It's made by Ford. Okay. And somebody noticed one of the pictures you can see through the windshield, and you can see a sliding rear window. So it is absolutely 100% a, a truck, truck, which basically confirms that Ford is coming out with what they are probably going to call the Ford Maverick. So when they said, we're making a new Ranger, everyone said, yeah, yeah, a new compact truck. And then it came out, and the Ranger's great. It's cool. It's a, very, it's a nice truck, but it's more of a midsize. It's like sure. a Tacoma, yep. right? Yep. And yep. cool, but that's not, you know. It's not a small truck. It's not a compact truck. And does anybody even make a compact truck? No. Nope. No. No. Not that I can think of. No. Right. So this is going to be based on the, um, uh, the escape platform. 
Right. Oh. Which is also what the Bronco Sport is based on. Right. So they're already evolving they're out of it, that. Right. right. So this is going to be an actual compact pickup. Um, from Ford, allegedly called the Maverick. At least that's the that's the working theory name. Wow. Um, so you're going to possibly have the compact Maverick, the Ranger, the full size. You're going to have the whole lineup. Um, I actually am pretty excited because, like, I've always loved the idea of a little little truck. Little truck, yep. Um, I always liked Rangers. They're they're cool. They're just yep. neat. They're they're to me that's more practical. I've just never needed a huge big truck. Sure. Um, and the Ranger, you know, when it came out, I was like, oh, maybe I'll, maybe this is something that I'll, you know, um, look into. And I was like, well, it's not really what I wanted it to be. Sure. Um, this potentially is fills that market that literally nobody else has. The closest thing, I think, to a compact truck is probably the the Nissan Frontier, mm-hmm. which again is still a not on really. The big size. It's still yep. not really yep. a compact truck. Yep. It's more of a. It's the smallest of the midsize trucks. Yeah, because you have the, the Ridgeline, I think, from Honda. Yeah. You know the Colorado, yep. the you know those things. But like you said, the small truck market boomed in the early '90s, and ever that was the thing, and it, it created magazines about totally slamming these things and doing all the cool stuff to them. But you're right, that kind of just went away because oh, it's bigger, 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 mm-hmm. and then okay, we're gonna go to a smaller one, but it's not as small as it used to be. It's no. Just a little bit smaller than the big one. Right. Just a, And like a little bit. Yeah. Like you park yeah. a Ranger beside an F-150 and it's a little bit smaller. Yeah. It's not that much smaller yeah, at yeah. all. So this is, um, yeah, it's cool. And again, it's, you know, maybe this will kickstart it again because nobody else has one. Yeah. And Ford, I think, we've talked about it before, they seem to be making a lot of really smart choices. Mm-hmm. They seem to be making vehicles that there needs to be a market for. Sure. Um, and they seem to be able to identify, like, well, you know, nobody's really doing this. Yeah. Uh, you know, Dodge doesn't have a midsize, do they? They don't have a midsize. Um, they only have the Ram. There is no midsize pickup. Well, they haven't come out with a new Dakota. No. So that's Cause, it. Well, because there's a Dakota nameplate, but it's like, uh, isn't they, didn't they reuse it on, isn't it some crossover SUV thing? I could be totally wrong. No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. Um, but the, I mean, the Dakota hasn't existed for what, for years. There 10 is no years, small maybe? Dodge truck. No. Yeah, no, absolutely not. So we have the new Colorado um, and the and the Canyon, yep. and we have the Ranger um, and the Tacoma and all those other ones. But, but not. And I'm with you on the. They're not. Yes, smaller truck, but not small truck. No, not small truck. You take an early '90s. Well, Steve, our videographer, yes. he's got the the Ranger. Absolutely. That's small truck. Yes. You know that's. You're sitting in it, you're in it, and everything's in front of you. Yeah, it's a car truck. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And that's what it should be. At 100%. Yeah. In Europe, that's what they drive. Yeah, there aren't big trucks. Nope. They don't exist. Nope, they don't. And it's just, it's economical, it's practical if you need a truck, like you said, you know. <laughs> yeah, you don't always need a big truck, but that little truck to put a little quad trailer behind to haul or... Throw something in. Yeah, that's... Yeah, not everyone needs 27 inches of suspension travel. (laughs) You know, you just drive around town. (laughs) You need to throw some backpacks in the back once in a while. No big deal. Um, In the cab with you. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But I... So anyway, I mean, it's it's, at least it's a thing, you know? It looks like they're moving forward with it. Um, I look forward to seeing it. It's going to be Ford, so it'll carry their same kind of design aesthetic. I think it'll be be great. It'll probably have some little EcoBoost four-banger in it. Perfect. Sure. Yeah. Good mileage. Practical, cool looking, it'll be guaranteed. I mean, just look at the stuff that's coming out from Ford. But exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And probably in a, in a decent price range that everybody will sure. be able to afford. Well, even the Ranger is like not absurdly expensive. No. It's fairly affordable. And this will definitely slot under it, obviously. Yeah, it has which to. Is, so, which is cool. You know, if, if we could get into, man, if we could get into like a compact truck for like, I don't know, under 40, that'd be a treat. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Uh, yeah. And like you said, it. I think there's a market for it. I think lots of people would, would, would go after that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Cool. Right on. Yeah, those are the stories that I got. So I guess we'll, um, we'll move on. Yeah, we got uh, Brad Goodfellow from Warren Winches. That's right. You know, we're talking truck. Perfect. You know, let's throw a winch on the front of anything, even a small truck. Yeah, why not? You know, like I said, you're, you might need it in the shopping center parking lot. Yes. <laughs> cool. Thanks, yeah. guys. We'll be right back after the break. You rely on your truck to tow, haul, and deliver day in and day out. At Bully Dog, we develop and improve your truck's economy, power, and performance without sacrificing durability. Every tuner is designed to exceed your expectations. With more than two decades of experience, Bully Dog is a name you can trust. Bully Dog gives your truck the performance edge it's been missing. Shop the largest Canadian inventory of Bully Dog tuning devices at JB's Power Center in Edmonton and Calgary at the guaranteed lowest prices. Or shop online at jbspowercenter.com. 
Not all tires are created equal. Fury tires offer performance within reach. Each Fury tire is created with aggressive tread and sidewall patterns to deliver off-road performance for the most demanding terrain, and their low noise characteristic patterns ensure continuous road traction for everyday driving. Great tires do not have to break the bank. Get great value and performance with Fury Off-Road. Traction for life. Shop the largest Canadian inventory of Fury Off-Road tires at JB's Power Centre in Edmonton and Calgary at the guaranteed lowest prices or shop online at jbspowercenter.com. Professional installation, balancing, and alignments available at all JB's Power Centre locations. We're back, guys. We're here with our guest, Brad Goodfellow from Warren Winch, Warren Industries. Brad, thanks for taking the time. Ah, no problem. Uh, glad to uh, glad glad for the opportunity and uh, be able to reach out to, to some customers, you guys. Fantastic. So we know as at JB's Powers and that Warren's got winches and stuff. But for some of our viewers that don't know much about Warren Industries, give us a brief overview and a history of the company. So yeah, Warren's been doing going. Been in the off-road business for a little over 70 years now. Started in 1948, uh, building hubs and, and accessories for the for the military jeeps that were becoming you know civilian use. Um, two years later, they got into the, the electric winch business with the Bellevue winch, and uh, but uh, so yeah, just the improvement, off-road accessories, tools, and that kind of stuff, uh, just to make off-road life better and and easier uh, for, for 72 years now. So it's, uh, wow. it's a great company based in Oregon. Manufacturing is still all done in Oregon, um, there in the United States. And um, just a, yeah, just a great legacy, a great, great company to work for. Awesome, how long have you been with the company, Brad? Uh, I've been with them about three years. Um, long time fan, long time installer of their products and uh, got the opportunity to come aboard about three years ago. That's awesome. So, again, you know, there, I believe, you know, up here in Canada, and I, I mean, obviously down south with you guys, but the off-road community is large. They're, they're, they're enthusiasts when it comes to off-roading and their vehicles. Why is it important to have a winch on your 4x4 rig? Uh, it's, it's really a, it's a huge tool. Um, you know, when we, when we do events like what, we're, like what I'm getting ready to go on next week, um, it, it's a requirement. Uh, just to to ensure that the vehicle can be operated safely off road, um, put it in. You know, we can we can push the vehicle a lot farther with the security of having that winch on there, knowing that you know we don't have to to attack stuff with speed. We don't have to you know bounce the tires off of things. Um, we can we can pull up the things, and we can use the winch as a tool to to you know to get us where we're going to go. Um, in the, or if things go bad, you know, things slip off, things get stuck, you know, we've got that recovery option as well. So it's, it's a huge security thing. It's a great tool for clearing, you know, clearing the, the trail. Um, I mean, there's, there's so many uses for them once you've, once you've, uh, once you've got one and, and learn how to use it. So It's like a friend with a truck, a friend with a winch on the trails would be the same thing, I guess. Yep. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah. For sure. So I, I guess th that kind of leads us into our next question. You know, how does a person decide the size of winch that they would need for their application? So in a recovery application, um, so when you're going to use the winch to ensure that you can get the vehicle out of whatever situation it might be in, uh, you want to go one and a half times the weight of the vehicle. That gives you enough enough. Uh, capacity that if all four tires are, are sunk that that winch is able to, to move the vehicle you know safely and, and, and without without harming the winch and you know, giving it enough power so like on a Jeep like what we got behind me um, it weighs you know the curb weight on the Jeep is probably around 3,500 3,800 pounds uh, and then you know we put five 600 pounds worth of gear in there so you get a little over 4,000 pounds sure Take that times one and a half. You know, really, you need a seven, eight thousand pound winch on on something like this. Um, so the easiest way to do that is look at the GBW, the Gross Vehicle Weight Rating of the vehicle, because that's what they put on there for. Um, that's what they they list the vehicle as. Right. Or that, that's the the spec of the vehicle. Um, and you know, four door four door Jeep. You know, JK JL. They're they're about about sixty. I think it's a little over a six thousand pound vehicle, so you need a nine thousand pound, you know, capacity winch or higher. 
um, I, I avoid going too high. Um, okay. You know, most of your mounting systems are made to that one and a half spec. Um, so, if, you know, you buy a mounting kit for a Jeep that's going to be rated probably to a 10, maybe a 12,000 pound winch. You get a winch higher than that, you're going to start bending components, bending frame and that kind of stuff if you pull to the maximum capacity of that winch. Right. So, um, so yeah, um, you know, and your, your smaller, lighter winches are usually a little bit faster. Right. Uh, and obviously a little bit less weight. So. So we always, I mean, we run 10,000 pound winches on just about all of our, you know, half ton trucks and full size Jeeps. Um, the littler Jeeps, you know, we run them 8,000 pounds all day long. So that, that, that makes complete sense. So I guess it's safe to say that picking the right winch is more important than the biggest winch. Oh, I got the biggest one with the biggest capacity. It's actually right. buy it and pick it for your specific application. Yeah, you're going to be much happier. It's going to perform a lot better. Um, you know, if you've got a, you know, four-door, you know, dually super duty, yeah, I mean, it's going to have the charging system and the frame rails and everything to handle a winch, you know, a 16,000 pound winch uh, without a problem. But you put something like that on the front of a Jeep, it's just going to weigh it down. The, you know, the battery's not going to be able to handle it, all that kind of stuff. So. Sure. That's, that, that, that's good advice. So, as I can see and our viewers can see, you're, all, you're out in the field, undisclosed location. Tell us about some of the stuff that yeah. you guys bring with you um, um, or that you're bringing with you for your, your trip that you're on right now. So, yeah, so we're, we're embarking on the ultimate adventure with uh, you know, Motor Trend, um, formerly uh, Peterson's four-wheel and off-road. Uh, so this is a, it's a great event that happens every year uh, where they grab, you know, a few sponsors, uh, a few of the, the guys from the magazine and, and the, the, uh, the shows and and readers uh we we hit the trail uh for usually about a thousand miles and for a week so live wow. out of the vehicles um wheel them hard and uh see who survives the uh, to the end wow that sounds like lots of fun so how do you prepare for a trip like that you, I, I know you showed us a picture of the jeep but like what's the other than your camping gear and things like that what what do you how do you prepare so yeah, we've got. I mean, obviously, yeah, we got everything we need to live in. You know, packed in the Jeep there. Um, you know, I kind of show you there. So this one's got one of the big uh, 8274s on there. But we just make sure that the Jeep is ready to go. Um, you know, obviously all the bolts are tight, tires are good. Uh, mechanically, um, we got to go over them a bunch. Just there's, you know, anytime you load one of these vehicles down to its capacity and and try to take it a thousand miles without you know, really without stopping, without having, you know, any, you know, assistance. Uh, it's really a test of, of the vehicle and, and of your equipment. So. Sure. Sure. That makes sense. So how often are, you know, being working for Warren Industries, how often are you guys out in the field testing and how important is that to Warren when they're selling their product after the fact? Um, so... I'm on, I'm on the sales side, uh, so I get to go out and interact with the customers, get their feedback, uh, show them the products, you know, make sure everybody see, you know, sees you know, the proper way to use this kind of stuff. We try to get out to as many events as possible. Um, I'm based in the southeast of the United States, uh, but obviously I've got customers all the way in. You know, I've got customers in Canada. I've got customers uh, on the West Coast, uh, kind of all over the place. So. We'll travel, I, I'll do 10 to 12 events a year. Uh, we've got our engineers out in the field uh, whenever they get a chance. Um, and then, you know, the, all the sales staff is out, you know, pretty much like me, you know, interacting and, and getting out there uh, with, uh, with the customers. Um, our engineers definitely, we field test, we, we test real world on all of our stuff. So we build a winch bumper, we will build a winch mount uh, we put it on the actual vehicle it's designed for, take it out in the, you know, behind the plant there, we've got everything set up, and we pull. And pull it to its maximum, measure what it's doing to the vehicle. If it, if those fenders and that bumper and the doors don't come back to, you know, in alignment, um, and, the, and the mounting system, you know, doesn't deflect at all, then it passes. If there's any misalignment, if there's any deflection in that mounting system, it fails, we start again. So... Um, you'll notice sometimes it takes a little bit longer for us to come out with some mounting applications and stuff, but you guarantee that once Warren comes out with one, um, it's going to fit 
you know, fit perfectly and, and meet every spec that we, that we claim. Wow, that's awesome. I mean, and it's a testament to making sure when a customer buys something, they're getting exactly what you're saying. Yeah. 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 It, there's a lot of forces uh, when you start dealing with this stuff uh, and, and can be very, very dangerous. So we want to make sure that everything is as safe as possible and, and reliable. That, yeah, that's great. Um, so you, you, you kind of touched on the next, next segment here, bumpers. So tell us about the new bumpers and what makes them different than other winch cell bumpers. So um, Jeep-wise, uh, we've got two series. We've got what we call our Elite, uh, which is a very sleek bumper. Uh, the winch sits down inside the bumper. Uh, and then we've got our Crawler Series bumper, which is a little bit lower price, a little bit simpler design. Um, this is a little bit older version of the crawler bumper on the front of the LJ here. Sure. But you can see the winch sits on top of the bumper. Okay. Um, so our newer Jeeps, the winch actually sits down inside. We got a little bit more frame and a lot more a lot more bumper in there. Um, gotcha. But uh, so the Jeep, you've got Elite, sleek, low profile, and then you've got crawler, simpler, a um, little bit easier to work with. And then for, our, for the trucks and for the full-size market, We've got a full line of what we call a scent bumpers. Uh, so these fit the, the body lines of the truck really, really well. Um, it's as low profile as we can get it and still get a winch in there and, and get the capacity that everybody's after. Um, and then you've got different options on the ascent bumpers, uh, grill guards and that kind of stuff. And then coming soon, just you know, barely shipping, we've got an ascent HD, okay. which are big heavy duty bumpers um you know look great on the front of a super duty it's going to be you can get a winch up to sixteen thousand. um you know it'll hold a winch up to eighteen thousand pounds oh, uh, wow. capacity um but big full-size bumpers lots of good you know heavy du- heavy duty tubes good you know front end protection uh against you know brush and and animals and all that kind of stuff um it's just a great looking se- series we do that front and rear bumpers uh, on the full-size trucks and even on the like the Rangers uh, and some of the downside trucks. Oh wow, that's awesome! And and those bumpers are shipping and available to be purchased now. Uh, Super Duties have, have already started shipping, and uh, Ram is shortly behind it, and then we'll have Chevy and GMC right behind that. Awesome! That that's that's great to hear. So our viewers can expect to see those things coming down the line for more. So. Yep. Now, like, I want to switch into like our next segment about the hub, uh, the new innovation with Bluetooth right. winch control. So, kind of give us give us a what it is, and then why you feel it's it's well obviously new to the market, but how is it a game changer? All right, so that's yeah we pulled that out here. So what we've got is it's a, it looks like a, a small remote, but what it is is a Bluetooth receiver. So previous wireless remotes uh and pretty much pretty much everything on the market right now is a radio frequency wire uh, wireless remote you've got a, a little receiver that you plug into the winch um and then you've got the little tiny remote uh, they work well uh there is a little bit of a delay there's a line of sight you know you've got to make sure that the the two can kind of see each other to make sure they're connected really well um what we've done with the hub now is we're using that Bluetooth signal that's in your, you know, any of your device, your, your iPad, um, your phone, um, tablets, whatever, you know, whatever it's got a Bluetooth uh, capability to it, you can sync it to this, to this uh, receiver now and plug and play right to your winch. So we've got them for the, all the worn winches, all the worn truck winches. We've got them for the worn power sport winches. And we also did a, a, a version with a, the Smitty Belt connector. So we know there's a ton of spinny built winches out in the out in the field. We want to make sure that everybody's got the, the you know the worn reliability, the connectivity uh, to run those winches as well. But uh, so what this does plugs right in, and uh, Corby Phillips here has got his phone synced up with it, got it plugged in. So I don't know if we can see that at all. You guys see the screen there? You'll see it come up first. Uh I call my Jeep the Funky Chicken. So when you have different multiple winches, you can actually hook the different vehicles and make sure they coordinate to uh, the vehicle you're using. Can you guys hear Corby? We can, yep, you bet. Okay. And then from the start screen, sorry, text, um, you got to unlock the winch itself, the remote, and you have basically power in or power out. 
and also the power in option right here. And you'll see up here on the dial gauge up here as we put low, it shows you loading your battery oh. um, for power in and power out. Keep the little dial going. Uh, of course, there you go. I'll just load on it. When the dial indicator tells you how to load your battery. Uh, it's most of the time you have your winch running in recovery, so it should give you an accurate feedback on your voltage and whatnot, so you aren't killing your battery. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, so this is, like I said, before you were just kind of listening for it, you, you know, go back to the vehicle and try to see what the gauge was saying, maybe if you have a gauge, but this gives you an, a, a constant feedback of where your battery's at, uh, so you know you can let things rest. Uh, and let, the, let the charging system on the vehicle, re, you know, recover and then go back to winching if you still need to, to, to pull a little bit farther. But uh, the responsiveness on this new hub is, is so much faster than, than the old wireless uh, from anybody, from, from us included um, and from anybody else. Uh, this, it's just it immediately, as soon as you hit that button, it's taken off, and as soon as you let go of the button, it stops, which, wow. is, which is a really good thing because then you don't get the run on that, that some of the other ones were plagued with. Sure. I mean, it, it, it is the future, and, and, and it's nice to see that, it's right in front of you. All the information's right there. It's instant. It's, I mean, you're not losing any control in comparison to the old controllers. So, I mean, that, that's, right. that's something that's awesome. Yeah, and we're all attached to our phones anymore. So, you know, what better device to, to be able to, uh, to use and, and have it at your fingertips? So, well, um, Any safety issues with using the hub? Not, you know, we, we've had it in development for almost two years now. Um, just to ensure that connectivity and, and ensure that responsiveness. So there's safety features um, figured into that, that you know, default is always gonna shut it off. If it loses connection, uh, things are gonna stop. It's not gonna continue to run the winch, um, that kind of stuff. Um, it's gonna tell you if it's losing, if it lost connection and you, you know, can repair it and that kind of stuff. And just having that feedback and having that control um, is, is just it's a game changer. Yeah, absolutely, and I mean, we could we actually see the phone there and, and and you know the simple controls and what it's showing you i mean again you hate to say it's almost an expectation with phones now but it kind of is that that you that you know we expect to have those right at our hand right so that that's real cool yep. and and are those shipping and and ready to go available or is it still are you guys still testing and and not yet available to the consumer no, we just started shipping them actually yesterday. So awesome. we we did the press release officially yesterday. So you know your your listeners, your viewers are are going to be some of the first ones to really see it in action, uh, other than just the still pictures and stuff that that guys been out there. So oh, that's great. So with um, you know being the off road enthusiast that you are and stuff, uh, ton of buzz around the Bronco that's coming out from Ford. Um, right. Have you guys had a chance to work with it yet, or you know? Are there any specific gear plans? Because you know there's going to be 25 million of them worldwide. So, you know, tell us a little bit if you have or, or what the plans might be. So we've, we've definitely got products in the works. Uh, we work very closely with a lot of the OEs. Um, being established as long as we have been and, and with our original, you know, OE contacts with, with the hub programs, uh, with our, you know, our wheel, you know, wheel disconnect hubs, um, has given us the opportunity to really learn how to work with an OE manufacturer and, and meet their standards. So just like the, the new Ford Tremor is available with a, with a worn winch in there, uh, the power wagons have had worn winches for a long time. Jeep always uses a, a worn winch for their Rubicon packages. Um, and, you know, that's going to continue with the Bronco. Uh, we were some of the first on the market with the Ranger. Uh, when they reintroduced the Ranger, we had bumpers for, and mounting systems for that one early. Uh, we expect kind of the same, same results for the Bronco. So, yes, we're working very closely with those guys and, uh, and be, be looking for that stuff when those, things, uh, when those things start shipping. That's awesome. Yeah, I look forward to seeing it. It's a cool-looking truck, and, I mean, it probably won't be that much that long after the release that somebody has it off-road and, and wheeling somewhere that they'll need a winch to pull it out eventually, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. That's, uh, it, it's going to be a big one. It's going to be a game-changer. Yeah. We're at, look forward to seeing the products coming down from, uh, from you guys on, on the new Bronco. Um, so, so far in our, our, our PowerCast here, 
we've talked about vehicle recovery and winches and, and Bluetooth connectivity now with the winch and, and user. So tell us about the new Epic Wheel Series for the Jeeps from Warren. Like, so, the first, I guess the first question is why? I mean, you're, 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 you're the recognized name when it comes to vehicle recovery and winch. Give us the why first, and then tell us what it's all about. All right. Um, the why, you know, we're – Warren is, is synonymous with, with Jeep vehicles, with off-road. It has been for a lot of years. Um, you know, that's kind of where we started was with Jeep. Realized that people wanted to modify, people wanted to en enhance their Jeeps. Um, you know, obviously we had, you know, a new vehicle other than a Ford Super Duty hasn't had, you know, locking hubs for 20, 30 years now. Sure. Um, so trying to make sure we, we can still give everybody a, a worn, equipped, you know, package for their vehicle. Um, and knowing that, you know, the styling and, and the engineers that, we, that we've got on hand uh, know the vehicles really well and, and can give the consumer, you know, what they want as far as durability and looks. Uh, and it was just kind of natural for us to, hey, let's let's try wheels. If we can't do hubs anymore, let's let's try wheels. Let's bring back that that classic hub style on the center cap. Sure. Uh, but with a modern look to the wheel, um, simple, you know, simple design, simple colors. It's it's three it's three styles and two colors. So, you know, the Jeep vehicles are are great because they're they're simple. They all use very similar components. Um, we can come out with a black and a a gun metal to, to you know accent the the already you know the colors that Jeep's already using and the accessories that are already on there. Um, so the response so far has been really really good. Uh, people really like the style. Uh, they're a super durable wheel. You know, lifetime structural warranty. Uh, great finishes on there, and uh, just really to just kind of complete that whole you know go prepared, worn equipped uh, package for your vehicle. That's cool, and and and. Are we, you know, obviously they're out and ready for purchase, or they're still in development? They, uh, they are. Yep. Nope. They're they're shipping now. Um, they're they're kind of working their way across the United States, and then we'll start getting them up uh, north of the border as well. So, um, I think my shipments into the Pacific Northwest just hit in the last couple of weeks. So. Cool. Cool. Again, so another great product coming out from Warren for our viewers and all consumers to expect. Now, do you foresee Warren getting into the truck side of the wheel thing? Are these going to be available for the truck stuff too? Um, uh, we'll have to see. Um, you know, like I said, response for the Jeep has been really, really good. Um, but wheels are really tough as far as all the different offsets and, and bolt patterns and all that stuff. Um, so the Jeep market was one we knew we could, we could, you know, guarantee that we were going to have a good quality product for you know that would that would appeal to a lot. Um, we'll see how well they go. If, if they go really well, then yeah, be looking for, for product expansion, you know, Toyota, Bronco, uh, and, and truck. Yeah, that, that's cool. And I mean, you guys, the classic design on the wheels, the, the, the classic timeless colors, black and gunmetal, I mean, they kind of go with everything. So, I, I mean, it's, it's good that you guys picked those colors. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll wait to see what's, uh, what's coming down the line, uh, hopefully for truck down the road. Um, so obviously we can see you're on you're you're en route to to an event that you're going to be spending a week in your Jeep. Um, tell us about you know the the peace of mind that Warren prides themselves on when you're in the middle of nowhere and you know you're not a uh, AMA call away from come get me I got to get home for a beer and a, and a sandwich right? Right. So like I said, seventy years of of engineering and reliability. Um, a winch and, and recovery type stuff like that is, is definitely something you'd never want to use. Um, but when you need it, um, it it's got to work. So, you know, having the the extra engineering, the the safeties, the the uh, I want to say, you know, the, just the dual dual circuits and that kind of stuff that's that's built into our products uh, just to ensure that it's going to work when you need it. And it's going to, you know, work for a, a long period of time, is is really what we what we've been founded on, and what what is kind of core to Warren. So, you know, you always know that that when you push that button, that thing is going to turn, and it's going to get you out of the situation, or or you know, fix whatever whatever needs to be fixed. You know, putting vehicles back on their wheels, you know, getting you out of the out of that uh, out of that mud hole. 
uh, up that last rock ledge, or, you know, whatever, whatever it's going to take to get you home, like you said, and, and safe. That, yeah, I mean, that, that's awesome. And again, it's a testament to the brand. It's a testament for how long the brand's been in the market. Um, you know, it, it's, again, the symbol, the worn, the everything is synonymous with recovery and winches. So, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. Yeah. When, when, you're, when the shit hits the fan and you need something to work, <laughs> you need your winch to work. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that, that red W doesn't go on stuff that's not tested. Good, 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 good to hear. So, um, if people want to follow, I, I mean, what you're doing now or, or after the fact for social media and things like that, how do we how do we follow you know your team and what you guys are doing with the you know again with the testing and the off road and, and things that are going on? How do we follow that? Yeah, so I mean the hashtags that we use, you know, hashtag worn equipped, hashtag uh, go prepared are out there on Instagram. Uh, we've got you know worn worn industries on Facebook. Um, what we're doing right now is UA2020, so hashtag UA2020, or follow it on, on Motor Trends, uh, and you'll see the adventures. You know, you see about 20, I think it's about 25 rigs with us this week, um, and see all the adventures we get in there. Uh, we've got full-size vans. We've got, I think, the Suzuki with us, uh, lots of Jeeps, Blazers. Uh, they really got a, a very diverse group of, of rigs and people put together for this one. It's going to be a great week. Um to, to follow and then yeah um and then, but you know warren in general we were always out there warren.com uh has has links to our to our social and uh some blogs and stuff where you can follow and see the products and all that kind of stuff as well that's awesome thanks very much brad i know you took the time we were supposed to, you were supposed to continue to drive but you pulled over for us we appreciate it <laughs> Be safe on your trip here. Have lots of fun, and, and we'll be following to see how it goes after the fact. All right. Yeah, like I said, check out Warren.com. Um, you know, look to look to JB's Power Center for your for your Warren products, and uh, and any questions, those guys those guys can get you hooked up. We appreciate it, man. Have fun on your trip, and uh, we'll talk soon. All right. Thank you, Steve. So that's our podcast from Brad Goodfellow, Warren Industries. Thanks for tuning in this week. We'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in to JB's PowerCast. Check out jbspowercenter.com for the latest updates. You can find the JB's PowerCast at jbspowercenter.com, YouTube, and Facebook. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. JB's PowerCast is a JB's Power Center production and is produced by Stephen M.D. and Sean Lansman.